Hello， 你好 ，Welcome back， 欢迎回来。To Wisdom Wednesday with Johnny Tiger. The date is February fifteenth, ah, twenty twenty-three. I hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day, and ah,、uh, uh, due to today's subject, hopefully you guys didn't get up to anything too kinky, or if you did, good for you. Um, today we're going to talk about one of the Uh, most long-lasting common、uh, punishment for criminals throughout Chinese history. I have briefly mentioned this back when we talked about the legal system in ancient China. I have mentioned several different kind of punishments and sentences, and today we are going to revisit one of them because this is so iconic. And yet, for people who didn't grow up in that culture. If you see it on TV, if you come across it in movie, you will have a WTF moment. Like, whoa, the Chinese people are kinky. What am I talking about? I'm talking about spanking, or to make it sound a little bit more dignified, it's actually called caning. Ah,、uh, so you beat your prisoner with canes. Ah.、Uh, So、uh, a lot of time when someone, let's say a thief, gets caught, and they、uh, let's say he's convicted of thievery,、uh, rather than throwing him in jail, the magistrate、uh, have the ability to sentence him to forty lashes with the cane. Now some of you would know that.、Uh, In, uh, in Singapore, they still carry on this tradition of caning, and they have perfected caning in Singapore. It's a literal art. Like they can inflict a lot of damage with just a few lashes. Like uh, appar- uh, apparently, it's so painful when they do it there. They have their cane treated with a special solution and. And make the wound heal slower and hurts a lot and all that stuff.、Uh, so yeah, caning is still being used in Singapore to、uh, to this day. But Chinese people were the first that come up with this really rather strange, at the sometimes funny, sometimes very horrifying punishment. Now, when you watch Chinese movies and you see people being sentenced to caning, you will see that where they strike is at the buttocks. So they will hold you down、uh, over a wheelbarrow or a, 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 a sawhorse or something like that. They'll hold you down、uh, over. A, sometimes it's like a bench, workbench. You know, pull down your pants, pull down your underpants, and there's traditionally speaking, there's always two people、uh, that's going to carry out the caning. There's it's not done by one person. There's always two guards doing it. One standing on your left, one standing on your right. Each one of them is armed with.、Uh, sometimes it's like a paddle. If you've seen the, like those big canoe paddle. Sometimes it looks like that, but actually, in、uh, re- real history,、uh, it's done with this、uh, club that is about as, as thick as your、uh, like half of your wrist, and the club is loaded with mercury on both end. That the, the ends of the club are hollowed out, and they、uh, fill it up with. Liquid metal, and then they cap the end. So these clubs are no joke. They're really, really heavy, and when when you hit, it can hurt a lot with these things. Um. So let's say if it's twenty lashes, let's say we go with twenty lashes with the cane. So you get the prisoner pinned down over the workbench, pull down their pants, pull down their underpants, uh, and then uh, you the person on the right go one. And then the person on the left go two. The person on the right go again three. Out. Yeah. 
I'm doing that to myself, then just to my hand, mind you. I'm not pulling down my pants, and but that hurts, yeah. Okay, but that that gives you an idea of how, of how this usually would go down. Uh, and there is even a third person, his job was to keep count. Okay, so while the people, the, the two guards is like hitting, and the third person have to keep count that one, two, three, four, five. So the magistrate or whoever the judge was could hear that the sentence was being carried out properly. We'll come back and talk more about this, the intricacy of this uh, in a little bit. But first, when did this start? Well, the tradition of Canaan started out in around the Han Dynasty. So we are looking at uh, roughly 200 years BC. But it wasn't until the Tang Dynasty, uh, so about six or seven hundred years later, that finally uh, it was put into law that you are only allowed to hit the bottom region. So prior to the Tang Dynasty, a lot of people actually died to Canaan. Uh, Canaan was not this like half kinky, half funny punishment. That people think of nowadays. Uh, prior to the Tang Dynasty, people who got sentenced to Canaan, there's a big chance of them dying because back then there's no, there was no mandate where you have to hit. So sometimes the, what the guards would do is they would just hit wherever they could reach. So they would hit the chest, they would hit the back, they would hit the back of the neck, and yeah, you already imagine the, this this club that is loaded down with liquid metal, striking the person on the back of the neck, on the spine, on the kidney, on the chest, it would kill a person. So a lot of people got caned to death. Uh, finally, during the Tang Dynasty, uh, one of the Tang emperors uh, read a medical journal that detailed uh, where the most important organs were in the human body and where the uh, muscle was the thickest in the human body. So the emperor decreed that, okay, from this day on, people who are to be caned shall only be caned in the rump, in the buttocks region. This way will avoid most of the important organ and people will die less when you know, when their only offense might be like st stealing a chicken. You steal a chicken and you get sentenced to five lashes with the cane. Okay, five lashes doesn't sound so bad when it's on your butt, right? But imagine before the royal decree, before Tang Dynasty, that five lashes might be on your head. Okay, that, so you, you, you might get beat to death for stealing that chicken. So the emperor said, okay, that, that's, 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 it. that's enough. We need to uh, tone this shit down a little bit. Well, we need to uh, uh, be a little bit more merciful. So this leads us to the first question of the day. Uh, like, what, what, well, leads us to the question of the day. Why was Chinese people so devoted, so fixated on caning? Why has this punishment, what has this form of punishment been used for thousands of years and it's still being used uh, in Singapore today. And there were three major reasons uh, for this. Number one, caning is a form of punishment that is highly flexible, highly flexible. What do I mean by this? If someone steals a chicken and you say, uh, chop off the finger, well, that's pretty much that. Like you, you, you can, you can, uh, you can do it nicely. You can do it horribly. You can do it with a dull knife or you can do it with a sharp knife, but the end result is the same. The finger go bye bye. You don't have a lot of control over the results, the results are the same. You sentence someone to decapitation, 
It doesn't matter how you do it. The, the person's dead afterward. You sentence someone to hang. It doesn't matter what how you do it. The person's dead afterward. So, uh, caning was one of the very few punishments that give you a lot of control. Give the magistrate, give the judge, give the guards a lot of control over how the end result have to be. And in some ways, it also gives the criminal a bit of control over the end result. Let me explain this to you. There were an entire secret, like a uh, secret code, secret language, uh, when a person is sentenced to be caned. For example, if the magistrate said, "I sentence Johnny Tiger to twenty lashes with a cane,"、uh, I want you guys to do it very, very hard. This was the secret. Very, very hard was the secret language for. I want you guys to make it look like it hurt a lot, but don't actually hurt the guy. Right. So what that told the guards, and this is things that the guards have to practice. Okay. Remember when I said they take down your pants. By the way, that part is、uh, totally up to the magistrate as well. The magistrate have the right to say,、uh, "King, you, you, because you are a dignified person, you only get caned、uh, with your clothes on. You, have, you don't need to take off your pants." Or the magistrate can go as far as strip you totally naked, even though oh, it's it's your butt they are hitting. But the magistrate can actually order you to strip naked. We'll come come back to that、uh, a little bit later.、Uh, so even that is under the magistrate's control. So when the magistrate says, "I want you guys to cane this person nice and hard," he means, "Okay, make make it look like make it look like it's really hard, but don't actually hurt the guy." So in this case,、uh, the two guards will bend the prisoner over the sawhorse or wheelbarrow, and pull down his pants, and then the person on the right takes the club and one. Okay, this one's for real. This one's for real. Number one, and you actually get hit. Okay. But then, number two, is the person on the right who did number one will leave his club on your skin a little bit longer, which means when the second person, the person on the left, swing their club down and do two, they're not hitting my skin. Okay, they will be hitting the club of the first person. It will deflect off the club of the first person. And then the second person leaves their club there. The first person takes their club up and three, and then four, and then five. Okay, make a lot of noise. And then these、uh, guards, while they're caning you, they also make really loud noises, like they're doing martial art、uh, practices, like hey, 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 like that. Okay. They'll make it so everybody thinks that they're doing it really, really hard. Sometimes they'll tell you you are the prisoner. They'll tell you scream a little bit, otherwise we have to hit you for real. Okay, so that is the what what the magistrate mean when he said, "I want you to hit him really, really hard." Now, if the magistrate said, "I sentence this person to twenty lashes, hit him nice and good." Then you're in trouble. Nice and good means for real. Okay, hit him, make him hurt, make him suffer、uh, as much as you can, but do not kill him. Yeah, you can even make the cane kill the person. We'll get get to that pretty soon. Okay, so let's say the magistrate said hit him nice and good. Then there's no blocking. Like the guards will not block each other's stick like this. Every hit is going to your skin. Right? Twenty lashes. You will get them nice and good. Very honest. Now let's say you are some kind of really horrible serial rapist, or you killed your own father or mother. 
or you are you you have been convicted of like something really horrible, like uh you 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 uh uh sleep with someone's wife and then you murder the person, or you know, let me just give you some example, like something really heinous like that, or uh let's say you uh have a bad reputation, you 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 haven't done anything that will get your head chopped off. But let's say you are a pain in the society's butt. You are a hoodlum. You just vandalize people's properties all the time. You steal chicken. You steal horses. You、um, molest women and、uh, all that stuff. Okay, let's say you are just like a no good piece of nothing, but you haven't actually done anything that the magistrate can sentence you to death for. Then in this case, the magistrate will say. To the guard, I want you to do twenty lashes on this person and make it serious. That is a secret command. Make it serious means kill the person. So some of you are wondering, how can you kill a person by hitting them on the butt? Easy. Because if you just go up a few inches from the butt, it's the spine, the tailbone, the kidney, all that stuff is right there above the rump area. So the guard will start one, two, three, and number four. Oh, oops! Oh, sorry, dude. Was that your kidney? Oh, five. Oh, sorry. That's your spine. Huh? Twenty lashes. You are dead. Even if you're not dead, you're now paralyzed, crippled. Okay, so that this is reason number one why caning was so popular in、uh, as a punishment because it gave the magistrate so much leeway to decide how to do this. We can do it nicely, we can do it horribly, or we can make it kill you.、Uh, it's all up to them. Now, I did say the uh, uh, criminal. Has a certain degree of control as well, okay. So if you have been a bad boy and you get caught, but you show a lot of remorse, you genuinely regret your action, and you convince the guard, you convince the magistrate that you really will be a good person from here on, then the magistrate will just tell them, okay, twenty lashes, make it nice and hard, in which. Go back to our secret code. Nice and hard means make it nice and loud. Look like you guys hit him hard, but it's okay. He he's he's going to be a good boy from now on. So don't actually hurt him.、Right? And also, in many cases, as disgusting as this sound,、uh, if the person being arrested is rich and has the money to bribe the magistrate, bribe the guard, the magistrate can say.、Uh, Okay, so and so has committed a heinous crime. We're going to sentence him to one hundred lashes. One hundred lashes. Like, can you imagine? That sounds like it's going to kill the person. Like, one hundred lashes is no joke. But the message is one hundred lashes, nice and hard. Make it nice and hard. You know, even emphasize that for the guard, which means you still only going to feel that first hit, and then. The other hit, the guard will do the little trick where they deflect each other's stick. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, you can do one hundred. You can do one thousand lashes, and you wouldn't really suffer the consequences. So, bribing, bribery was a really big thing for people. Like,、uh, there were, I hate to say this, there were a lot of really bad officials that will cane the person to death. If the person didn't give them some bribe ahead of time, right? So th this was the more corrupt part of this whole system. Th so yeah, reason number one gave a lot of flexibility. Reason number two, caning did not reduce the workforce. A Chi as, as most of you know, the Chinese people through for thousands of years has been farmers. Ranchers, uh, uh, and and fishermen, um, uh, workers, uh, it's a 
very agriculturally important country uh, for thousands of years, which means you need your people to be able to go work. If you throw them in jail, they can't go work. Hell, you have to feed them. So you end up with the same problem we have in the modern society. You have a lot of people in jail are getting fed. So that's not good. You chop off their head, you chop off their arm, they can't work. You break their leg, they can't work. So caning became a popular uh, punishment because it allows a person to still get back to work. We give you 20 lashes, and yes, even if we hit you hard, you may have to limp around for a couple of weeks, but you can still work. Uh, it doesn't stop you from going to the to, to tend to your chicken or tend to your crop. You won't feel very comfortable, but it's not going to stop you from being a productive member of the society. So this was an, a second reason why caning was such a big uh, favorable uh, punishment. Number three, perhaps the most insidious reason, caning not only punishes you physically, but also punishes you psychologically and emotionally. For example, once upon a time, and this was actually written down in uh, factual history, there was a young lady who cheated on her husband and was caught red-handed and the husband took her to the magistrate. Well, technically speaking, uh, it's not a very serious crime, but because Chinese people has always put a, such a high value on virtues, especially around women folks, yeah, I know, it's very sexist. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's the way it was. Women have to obey a lot of things like uh, being virtuous, being uh, only obeyed, the, uh, uh, loyal to the husband and all that stuff, while men didn't have to obey a lot of that. Um, we'll get to that uh, in a different episode where we'll talk about that in some different episodes. But so this young lady, cheated on her husband, was caught and taken to the magistrate. And the magistrate said, well, technically speaking, this offense only warrants five lashes. But if we just give her five lashes, she may not really uh, remember this lesson. Uh, she, she, it might not be enough of punishment for, for her. Uh, she'll just heal up and go do it again. Heck, if she's kinky enough, she may actually enjoy this. So remember earlier when I said the magistrate has a right to order you to strip? So the magistrate had her stripped totally naked and the five lashes were delivered in front of the entire town. Yeah, this lady got stripped naked and bent over a sawhorse and had her butt caned uh, only five lashes but still in front of the entire town afterward her parents were so humiliated they tried to take her home and because she was totally naked they, her parents tried to cover her they took off their own clothes and tried to cover her but the town's folks uh, were so disgusted by her infidelity that every time the parents tried to cover her with clothes, the uh, townsfolks would rush forward and take the clothes away. So in the end, this poor lady had to walk all the way home with her parents, but naked, after being caned five times. Afterward, her parents were so embarrassed, this young lady was so embarrassed, was so embarrassed that all three of them committed suicide. So caning was not just a punishment on your body. It, it, if the magistrate wanted, it could definitely become a punishment on your psyche, on your spirit. 
it can embarrass you so bad that you end up rather that they kill you. But this punishment was not just for the civilian. In fact, caning was even a more severe punishment for、uh, nobility. Imagine this young lady who got so embarrassed because she got caned naked in front of the whole town. She was just a civilian. Can you imagine if this was a princess or a queen or a noble woman that had to be caned? Naked in front of the whole town. There's no way that they would ever live that down afterward. And this has happened many, many times throughout Chinese history, when queens and princesses,、uh, noble men, noble women that disobeyed order, that ended up having to be punished in front of the all the citizen and got stripped naked and caned like that. Even one of the emperors. There was an emperor during the Jin Dynasty in Chinese history.、Uh, he was a very good warrior. So after he won the war and returned to、uh, his palace, he was very happy and he wanted to celebrate with、uh, getting some、uh, wine. He wanted to throw a party. So he said to his minister, "Hey, I want you to、uh, get some." Gold and silver from the treasury, so we can throw a party. And the minister said, "No, your Majesty, your grandfather, when he was the emperor, he clearly decreed that the treasury, gold and silver, can only be used for proper uses. I do not feel that throwing a party is a proper usage of those gold and silver." Well. This made the emperor very unhappy. So that night, the emperor snuck into the treasury himself and stole several pouches of gold and silver, and、uh, threw himself a massive party next day. Now, most other times, if an emperor was to steal money from the treasury, most people, most people wouldn't say anything about it,、uh, because hey, you know, he's the emperor, but. In this case, his minister was very, very gun ho, very badass. So, the day after the party, the minister pointed out、uh, in front of the entire court how the emperor himself snuck into the treasury, defied his grandfather's order, and spent gold and silver on alcohol and women. Really shamed the heck out of the emperor, and then. The minister asked the emperor, "Your Majesty, do you know what the punishment is for defying your ancestor's order?" And the emperor was so embarrassed that he said, "Go ahead, just give me fifty lashes with the cane." So the emperor himself stepped down from his throne, bent over the stairs、uh, at the foot of the throne, pulled up his royal robe. Pull down his pants and let all the ministers administrate the caning fifty lashes. This is probably the only time in Chinese history that an emperor let his people cane him, and it's probably the only time in Chinese history that the ministers dare to cane the emperor. The story goes that while the caning was being administered, the emperor even. Was telling the minister, "Do not go easy on me just because I'm your emperor. I, I broke the rule. I stole the gold, so I want you to hit me hard." And while this was going on, the ministers were telling the emperor, "Your Majesty, we are so sorry. We have to do this, but the law is the law, and if you ever dare to do this again, we will cane you again." We're so sorry. We're so sorry, Your Majesty, but we have to do this. <laughs> they kept hitting him while they were doing that, saying saying these things. So this is just a, a way to show you guys that caning wasn't just a thing for the rich people to do to the poor people. This punishment had been used from the to、uh, used against the the emperor himself, all the way down to the lowliest of thugs and beggars and criminals. Throughout Chinese history.